All right, now that we've finished taking a look at the command panel, let us look at another very important area in the 3DS Max user interface. A vital part. Yes, that's right, and that's going to be everything related to animation on the UI. And there's a few different areas that we're going to be looking at. Down here we've got our transport controls. Now, this was lightly touched on when we were looking mm -hmm. at the status bar earlier, but now we're going to spend just a minute and kind of go over what everything does, a general overview anyways. And, of course, over here we've got animation controls, and then we have the time slide. So now, you know, if you have a 3D package, the 3D package really needs to be able to do animation for it to be a 3D package. Otherwise, it's just going to be a modeling package. Modeling, texturing, and rendering. So bringing things to life is obviously important. Yeah. So, Bill, let's help everyone out. What is animation? Animation. Well, animation is the ability to make an object... Uh, make an object's attributes uh, change. Okay. And uh, you can key those attributes. Okay. And um, basically, it's uh, sort of like interpolating between one key to another key. Okay, that's good. You sound nervous, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm just so excited Suddenly about this stuff. Suddenly, the spotlight <laughs> swivels. That's very good. Um, I'm just going to enhance it just a little bit. I, I usually like to say that animation is the change of a parameter's value over time. Sure. It really does come down to that. A lot of people like to jump on the moving bandwagon. Yeah. What yeah. is animation? Animation this is the thing moving. that's moving. Right. Well, all right, so tell me how the light intensity is moving if you have a flickering light in a dark room. It's right. not moving. It's right. the intensity it's changing. changing of a parameter. The, the point is it's not always about motion. That's right. So obviously throughout this course we're going to be animating quite a few things. That is going to become important. So you guys are going to become intimately familiar with these animation controls located at the bottom. But back to the very generic explanation of animation that I gave. It is the change of a parameter value over time. Well, that means we're dealing with time. We must be able to measure time. We must be able to see time. And we are presented with time right here with a time slider. And when working in a 3D application, you deal with what is known as frames. frames. That's right. right. And, you know, a certain amount of frames make up a second. And now we're talking about time in the world that we live in. Which now is you, continuous. That's right. Now, yeah. you need to know what medium, in the end, you are creating your final scene for. I mean, are you, are you shooting it out for film? Are you creating this for television broadcast? Is it made for a game? Because each of these different media types are going to, they're going to have different frame settings slash equate to time requirements. Well, I'm going to make this different as complicated. Different numbers of frames per second. <laughs> That's right. Yes. So in other words, for television, it's 29 point blah, blah, blah. We always just round it up and say 30, 30, 30. frames per second for NTSC. In the United yeah, States. Yeah, I was going to say, all the people in the UK are like, excuse me. The Powell <laughs> people, that's right. And Powell. if we were rendering this out for, let's say, film, well, we're now dealing with 24 frames per second. Right. If we're rendering this out for games, it depends on the way the engine was created. You know, so, I mean, we, we have a whole bunch of different variations that are available. So it is very important, obviously, when you're creating an animation that you are aware of of what you're creating the animation for in the end. That's right, which is something that we'll focus more deeply on later once we get heavier into animation itself. That's right. Again, just a generic overview. Right now, though, let's say we're dealing with 30 frames make up one second as you and I know it. So that means we start here, and by the time we get all the way over to frame 30, you'll notice that as I am dragging the time slider right here, it is telling us what frame we are currently on, and it is also giving us an indication down below with a shaded bluish area okay <laughs> let's make that dramatic and then also we can see how many frames total that we're dealing with right now as we go from frame zero to 100 now we're not going to get into the animation preferences or excuse me animation settings etc uh, but we do have the ability to come in and create a or change our start and stop times for the animation so all because we have 100 frames when we start out and we decide eh, you know maybe i need 500 frames sure it's not going to harm anything for us right. to go in there later and change it from an ending time of 100 to an ending time of 500 well you'd hope not we well we definitely hope not <laughs> animated shorts would take on a whole new meaning so basically this is our time slider and it's very important to understand how this works and from there anytime you have the ability to manipulate time uh, by somehow going through it, in this case dragging the time center, we need other ways that we can play through the time. 
Like as if it was like a VCR or a DVD player, right? right. So you can't say VCR. No, I know. I, that's why I was like, okay, all right. So a tape two, deck. Two no. thirds of our audience <laughs> doesn't know what a VCR is. What is a VCR? <laughs> Excuse me. So we need the ability to do things like play, go back to the very beginning, you know, click through frames, mm-hmm. etc. Specific, um, specify a specific frame to jump straight to if we have sure. a very complex scene and it's hard to drag our time slider through mm-hmm. because of the feedback we get. So we have all of these abilities provided for us down here, and this section is called, let me see the mouse again real quick, this section is called our transport controls. Okay, right. It's as simple as that. We do, of course, over here have animation settings, or this is our time configuration button. As you and this is where we could adjust that range of yeah. animation. I just always kind of look at this as our animation settings in a sense. Where This is where our start time, the length of the animation, our end time. So if we wanted that 500, we come in here and set the length to 500, or just come and say that our end time will be 500. Mm-hmm. We can rescale time. Time, set current that. time. Mm-hmm. We can set our frame rates. NTSC, as we talked about a second ago, PAL, film, or custom as if we're creating for a game or some other or maybe type. for like a web movie, you just want 10 frames per second. You got it, exactly. And then how are we going to display our time back down here? Right now we're displaying it in frames, so you can see we're on frame 5 of 100, and we have different types available. And then our playback, is it going to be real time, the active viewport only? Is it going to loop when it gets to the end? Will it loop back? What speed is it going to play? Right now mm-hmm. it's at 1x, so it's going to play back at normal speed. We can speed it up. We can slow it down. There's all sorts of things in here that you guys can work with. And as we progress through this course, you're going to find us in here often changing things. That's right. But for now, boop, you've Goodbye. seen it. Goodbye. So from there, okay, I'm talking an awful lot. Bill, you want to talk about maybe some of the buttons found over here on that? Sure, yeah. Controls? Well, basically, I like to do a quick little example where we get started doing a Ooh. small keyframe animation. I yeah. love instructors yeah. that give me examples. That's right, guys. So, if you want to follow along, go for it. So let's create a sphere. The sphere. Here's the earth. A no. sphere. I'm going to shade that up with F4. I'm, I'm sorry, turn on wireframe unshaded. And uh, I'm going to bring out the move tool with W. Oh, he's I'm bringing gonna, out the move tool. All I'm right. going to slide it over on can X just a little screen, bit. Uncle Bill? Can we, we sure can with an Alt W. Yay. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Bill. Will, will, will. Okay, now let's start at time zero. Now I'm going to turn on auto key which is a very, very cool and kind of a scary thing at first. But and, uh, and they make it even more scarier by making <laughs> one third of your red. UI turn red. Oh. I know. Every time I see the you know, big red flash, I always think, danger! You know? Exactly. So. Danger or so blood. So this kind of allows you to let Max set the keys for you. Yeah. If you will. Yeah, Hence the name Auto, auto key. key. So now I'm going to go over to frame 100 all the way across. the keys are automatic. I'm just going to drag my sphere over to the other side of the grid. Now watch what happens when I let go. Boom. Keys have been set. And you can see the keys. Yep. Looking here's down the key. in your time slider, right a little time ruler. And here's what you would call an anchor key. This is sort of like the key that Max sets down at the beginning of your animation. Right. Automatically when you use auto key. So now if you actually slide the time slider back and forth, mm-hmm. Max will interpolate between yep. the values found in both keyframes. So you only have to define the start and we the have end. Animation. We, we have yes, animation. We do. Yes, we do. And Max interpolates the rest. Now, Very a little cool. bit later, we're going to get into keyframe animation. We'll discuss exactly what keyframe animation yep. is, along with other types of animation available in 3DS Not Max. to mention other ways you can actually create keyframe animation, different ways you can go about uh, adjusting your keys, placing them down. I did want to say this, though, because we were talking earlier about the definition of animation, it being the change of a value over time, and that it's not always motion. And yet our first example was what? Motion. Moving a ball motion. from one side of the grid sure. to the other. But think about it. What actually changed? The ball's doing a lot more than just moving. We have its X translate value, which is a number. It is an attribute. It's a parameter. It's a parameter on the sphere that is changing over time, giving us motion. That's right. So even though the sphere is moving, fundamentally, we still have a change in value over time. Precisely. In fact, uh, why don't we actually grab the scale (gasps) tool here? And we still have auto keys turned on. He's whipping out the yeah. He's pulling he's the cool the big stuff. Guns now. He's pulling the cool wow. stuff out of his bag of tricks. And now, if you look down, now the key has kind of a multicolor to it. Aha! Uh-huh. Dun dun dun. So now it used to be all red, and now it's red and blue. Yeah, how cool is that? Interesting, huh? Yeah. Zach, can you tell us about that? I can. All of the uh, various attributes on a transform for an object are color coded. Sure. So uh, red is going to be uh, translation. Blue is going to be scale, and green is going to be rotation, Rotate. which we haven't animated yet, so you don't see anything in green right now. Gotcha. <laughs> Thank you, sir. So You're now if we well. drag the old time slider, what does it look like? I'm going to turn off auto key, and I'm going to rewind back to the start. Using those transforms. now I'm actually controls. going to hit play. Let's see what happens. Whoa. <laughs> 
So it wasn't just moving, we had keyed our scale as well. Sound effects brought to you by Buzz. By Jason Busby. <laughs> I'm going to stop that now. <laughs> As you guys saw a few minutes ago in the animation settings or the time configuration dialogue, we do have looping turned on, right, so it's right. looping. Yep. So this just uh, – see, we've got a couple more things down there. We do have a set key button. Right. If you don't want to automatically have Max set your keys for you, you can uh, explicitly set them yourself using set key. Okay. Now, th- here's something that um, I don't expect you guys to fully understand right now. Again, this is just kind of seed planting. A lot of the exterior tools that have been added to 3DS Max require the use of auto key. Right. You don't have to think too hard about that right now. Just remember I said it for later, and then we'll just go ahead and move right on. Sure. All right, and thinking about it, we've got a few more buttons down there. Anything important? Um, let's see. Nothing that we need to really get into right now. Just understand that the drop-down and the buttons that are down there all deal with animation. Mm-hmm. And that pretty much wraps up everything from our animation controls, our transport controls, and our time slider. And that will wrap up this introduction to the animation portion of the user interface. Thanks, guys.